how do you price leaf uh, cleanup jobs? And my other question was, what is the standard, you know, for a house or a residential property? And you said it was anywhere from probably about 200 bucks, right? Well, it really depends on the property. Don't walk up to something <laughs> and say 200 bucks. It might be a thousand dollar cleanup, right. um, but it might be 150. You know, it really all depends. Some people have minimums and you'll find that, you know, because lawn care, power washing, window cleaning, whatever, it's low barrier entry type work. So you'll have people that come in and you're always going to have people that will do it cheaper than you, but there's always going to be people that do it more expensive than you. And you just have to find what your break even point is, figure out your profit margin, what you want to put on top of that. And then there are two major methods for bidding leaves that people go off of. One is bidding it by the job, which I found is like playing Russian roulette. And um, I don't enjoy doing it because People say, oh, I never fail. I never bid it wrong. Here's the thing with leaves is that when you're blowing them out and how I said they fluff up, well, sometimes they've been sitting there for two months and it's rained and they're matted down. Right. And it looks like it's nothing, right? It's just barely anything there. Well, then you get to blow it on it with your blower and all of a sudden you got six foot high piles in the middle of the yard and you're going, oh, man, this <laughs> This, this one's going to be a on. massive job right here. Um, is there any way to prevent that from happening then? Like, do you go out beforehand and maybe measure how deep the leaves go or? No, no. Leaves are very deceiving. I mean, you can eyeball the property, go there and stuff. But here's here's what I found is best for me. So there's that method. And here's one more thing about the two methods. There's people on both sides that will tell you it's wrong one way or the other. And they'll tell you you're an idiot one way or the other. It's whatever works best for your company. For me. I really hated playing Russian roulette. I hated losing three jobs out of 10 uh, on being profitable. You know, you go out there and you're like, okay, I got, I got to make this one. We're going to, you know, take care of it. We're going to make some money today. You got two guys working with you. You're cleaning it up. And then you find out it takes three times longer than what you thought. And so you bid it for, you know, 200 bucks and it ends up being a $600 job and you, you're just dying there. So the way that I did it is I always bid per man hour. So I take my break even point, find my man hour rate, figure out what you're going to charge. You know, for our first couple of years when I started doing it that way, I went to $60 a man hour and then 65. And I did have no math behind it there. Okay. When I was doing 16, 65, it's just, I thought that's, well, that sounds right. I'm going to try bidding hourly. I'm going to pull this number out of nowhere. And uh, it worked. I didn't make much money. Wait, 1665 was your hourly rate? Yeah, yeah. Just because you thought of it out of thin air? Well, I mean, I didn't know anything about business at the time, right? I was still learning. So I just okay. pulled it out of there. I'm like, well, people say a dollar a minute. I'm going to do $60. Ultimately, I ended up charging $100 per man hour. And uh, we were profitable for less than that. But I charged $100 per man hour because there's a couple different things that go into the man hour rate. And that's, you know, your break even point. But you also can factor in. Uh, environmental factors like where you live. We're in an affluent area. It's a very busy service. I'm going to be busy. I know there's going to be a lot of work. So like when I worked with multiple people, I would charge $100 per man hour. And then later when I went back to being solo, I just charged $150 an hour and I still closed jobs. But I took on less work because I didn't want to work as much. So, I mean, it's really wherever you're at. If you can make the phone ring, you can charge whatever you want if you can close the job still. And you were eyeballing this as far as the hourly rate goes. You'd say this is going to take between what, like six and eight hours or are you? That's the great thing. So I've moved my business. You can go eyeball stuff, but I, I don't like driving across town. You know, Tulsa is a pretty big area, right? So So you just tell people it's going to be a hundred dollars an hour per. uh, I tell them exactly what it is up front. I say, Hey, I come out, I got this equipment. I'm going to come out, blow everything out, load it up, haul it away. It's going to be this much per hour. I've got a two man crew. And, uh, you know, the average property in your area, because it's off their address, I can tell what area of town they're in. So the average property in your area normally takes about this amount of time. But if you have a lot of leaves, it might take longer. Once I get to your property, I can give you a call and let you know if it'll take a little longer. But if you'd like to be on the schedule, I can put you on the schedule. I've got an opening for Tuesday. You want to be on there? Awesome. I thought so. So we'll get them on there, show up Tuesday, give them a call, say, hey, looks great. I'm going to get going. Um, and then if you're, if you're hesitant with hourly rates, right, you can do a cap out rate, which is kind of in the middle between bidding the job and then bidding it hourly, but still it's like playing Russian roulette. But once you get used to it and you go, okay, I've done 
20 jobs that are the same size property, I think I can figure it out. If you need help keeping up with customers, sending estimates, invoices, and collecting payments all for free, check out Quote IQ. It'll be linked in the comment section and the description as well.